In this section, we're going to be factoring ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's look at that form first, ax squared plus bx plus c. So in order to approach these problems, what you want to do is you want to start off by multiplying a times c. Then you want to find factors of a times c that add up to b. And once you find those two factors, you want to write them out into the equation, group them together, and then factor again to reach your final step. So I'm going to show you an example of this now. We have the problem 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. So like I said before, we're going to start off by multiplying a times c, so 2 times 12 gives us 24. Now let's find factors of 24 that add up to 11. Factors such as you know 1 times 24, which equals 24, but adds up to be 25. Factors such as 6 and 4, which multiplies to be 24, but adds up to be 10. And then we have the factors 8 times 3, which multiplies to be 24 and adds up to 11. So those work. So we want to write 2x squared plus 8x plus 3x plus 12. Now we want to group the terms that we have together so let's group the first two terms together and the second two. Now we want to factor each one out individually so let's look at the first group we got 2x squared plus 8x and we want to factor out what we can so we can see that 2 would be the greatest common factor of the both of them and seeing as they both have at least one x we can pull out the x so if we do that for the first set, we would be left with just x. And if we pull out a 2x from 8x, we would be left with just a 4. Now let's look at the second set. We have 3x plus 12. We know that we can pull out a 3 because 3 is the greatest common factor. So divide both time terms by 3, we would be left with an x on the first term. And if we divide 12 by 3, we would be left with a 4. So we can see that we have common factors again x plus 4 and x plus 4 so we can group those two together and then we can group the 2x plus 3 together because if we pulled out an x plus 4 from 2x times x plus 4 we would only be left with 2x and if we did the same thing for 3 times x plus 4 we would only be left with a 3 so that would be our factorization now let's look at another example of this factoring ax squared plus bx plus c except this time when c is negative so here we have 4y squared plus 7y minus 2. So let's start off again by multiplying a times c. a times c gives us a negative 8. Now let's find factors of negative 8 that are going to add up to positive 7. So we can look at 1. We can look at negative 1 and positive 8. Because we know that negative 1 times 8 is going to give us a negative 8 and when we add them together we actually get 7 so we found our factors so now we can go ahead and write out the equation 4y squared times 8y plus 8y minus 1y minus 2 and again we can go ahead and group our factors we can group our terms together and then factor so let's look at the first set. We can see that the greatest common factor, 4y squared plus 8y, is going to be 4. And then the, both terms have at least 1y, so we can pull out 1y. And then when we pull out 4y, we divide the 4, so we'd be left with 1. And then because we pulled out 1y, we would be left with only 1y. Plus 8y divided by 4y, which would leave us with just 2. Minus. And then when we factor out this one, we can't really pull out anything other than a negative 1. So when we pull out a negative 1, the sign in the middle becomes positive, and then we have to change our terms on the inside. So we are left with y plus 2. Now again, we can see that we have common factors, y plus 2. So we can pull those out. So when we pull out y plus 2, we're left with 4y plus 1 and that would be the second parentheses. Now, let's
an example of factoring ax squared plus bx plus c when a is negative. So our problem is negative 2x squared minus 15x minus 7. What we want to do is we want to start off by pulling out a negative 1. And if we pull out a negative 1, this, the sign for every term changes. So the negative 2x became a positive 2x, negative 15x became a positive 15x, and the negative 7 became a positive 7. So if we do 2 times 7 now, we would get 14. Now we want to look at the factors of 14 that add up to 15. So let's look at the first set of factors. We got 1 and 14. 1 times 14 equals 14. And 1 plus 14 equals 15. So we have found our factors. So we can rewrite the problem instead this time as 2x squared. Negative 1 parentheses 2x squared plus 14x plus 1 plus 7. And we can group our first set of terms together, which would be 2x squared plus 14x. And then the second set, 1x plus 7. And we can go ahead and factor the first set. 2 would be the greatest common factor, and both terms have at least 1x, so we can pull out an x. And that would leave us with x plus 7. And in our second grouping, there's nothing we can really factor out, so we can just leave our terms. And we can see that we have a common factor of x plus 7 and x plus 7. So we can pull that out. So that would leave us with negative 1 parentheses x plus 7 times 2x plus 1. You've got to imagine that there's a 1 in front of that x plus 7, that second x plus 7. Now we're going to look at an example of factoring ax squared plus bx plus c when c is negative. So our example is going to be 4y squared plus 7y minus 2. So let's start by multiplying a times c. So 4 times negative 2 would give us negative 8. Now we want to find factors of negative 8 that add up to positive 7. So let's look at negative 1 and 8. Negative 1 times 8 equals negative 8. And when we add them together, we get 7. So we can see that this is the right factors. So we can rewrite our main statement and make it 4y squared plus 8y minus 1y minus 2. Now we can go ahead and group our factors together. We want to go ahead and group the first two terms together and the second two th terms. Now let's go ahead and factor. If we were to factor the first set, you can see that the greatest common factor is a 4, and both terms have at least 1y. So when we pull out a 4y, the first term would become just y, because 4y times y equals 4y squared. And then the second term would become 8y divided by 4y, which is just 2. Now let's go ahead and factor the second set. We can, we can see that they both have a negative 1, so we can pull out a negative 1, making it y plus 2. Now we can see that we have the common factor of y plus 2 on both terms, so we can pull that out. So that gives us y plus 2. And then if we were to pull out a y plus 2 from each of those terms, we would be left with a 4y minus 1.